Hello, everybody. It's Steph Norbury here from the Amusement Network. And uh, I've got a very familiar face with me, great friend uh, joining this week. It's Shaney Farr, who's the owner of iFun Amusements in Hearn Bay, as you all know. Hello, Shaney. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. And uh, I know it's a busy time of the year, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, just a quick chat and just to see how things are with business this year. And let's start off by uh, you telling us a little bit about the business and how you've come to be uh, running it. OK, so, um, well, it's been in my family since, I think, 1956. Um, so we're five generations worked here. Uh, that's fairly common with showmen, I think, across the country. It's uh, it's the same business it's always been in some ways, but in other ways it's changed unrecognisably, I'd say. Um, I mean, for, for instance, our working day has changed. Um, it's a much shorter day now, which completely contradicts the AGC business where they're all open 24 hours yeah. and for us we used to be open to kind of 11 o'clock at night now seven or eight o'clock the business really seems to dwindle down and we're closing earlier in the winter that means that you've got a shorter period of the day to try and take the same hopefully more money right um, so that's a bit of a challenge yeah and there's obviously been lots of different changes with legislation and taxation and some of it's been really good for us and some has been a bit more complicated to get our heads around. Yeah. Um, but we're all hardworking people. So um, we figure it out as we go along. As far as, say, uh, the number of people that you employ these days, um, has that changed? Um, I'd say yes. I have a larger team of, of people working for me because, well, definitely since COVID, there's not quite the same enthusiasm to do long hours that mm. people used to want to do um so yeah so I have to have a bigger team for that and finding good staff I'm sure everyone has the same experience it's very difficult fortunately at the moment I'm lucky I've got a good team and unless somebody phones in sick today I'm I'm very happy with who I've got <laughs> exactly <laughs> you mentioned um legislation Go in a little bit more detail for me. What, what's what been good over the last few years? What's been less so for you as a business? I think the whole MGD VAT complication is difficult, especially because you can't get a firm answer. So you want to do it the right way, but you're not told exactly what that right way is. Mm. Um, so it's been a benefit. The 5% MGD on pushers is a good thing. That's worked to our, our advantage, but the MGD in the all cash area uh, is that's 20% on instead of 20% in. So, and then just trying to work out how you declare your different taxation is much yeah. more complicated. Yeah, no, I can understand that. And this summer, it's it's been a tricky one, hasn't it? I mean, the weather's been all over the place from scorching hot just before the schools broke up to absolutely dreadful once they did. How has it affected you as a business? I had a really good start to the year um, and I was feeling really optimistic. At the same time as, you know, we're kind of living with everything that we hear on the news and mm. we're all suffering higher expenses. So we know that it can't carry on being good and then we've got to the summer holidays we're all very reliant or seasonal businesses uh -huh. very reliant on the money that we take in this next six weeks to yeah. get us through the winter months um and then the weather's just gone completely downhill and i mean yesterday we sat outside the arcade in coats and boots and and then today and there were no customers and then today it's glorious sunshine yeah. and you can't find a car parking space for love nor money no so no i know it, i've just seen that on social media john Vallis has just posted saying Herm bay is yeah. absolutely <laughs> rammed with people today yeah he he said to send his regards <laughs> um yes so yeah it's a tricky one and i think i can definitely start to feel that the whole cost of living thing is starting to bite a little mm. bit um so it's it's scary times i think yeah no absolutely and out of the machines and the mix and the attractions that you've got what seems to be most popular with your customers this summer i think the things that 
make people feel like they're getting good value for money. Right. So either a game that's got a good amount of playtime or a game where you get lots of tickets. Right. So redemption is, is a big thing for us. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so just giving them value for money, I think, and just making that money last them a little bit longer. Um, they've only got so much to spend, and if they can just make eke it out a little bit, I think that's that's the way to keep them for yeah. the next however long it takes until we get out of this predicament. This situation with cost of living, isn't it, really? Yeah. And everybody feeling the pinch. Um, obviously, we've got new uh, legislation um, in the pipeline, uh, and I know that you're a, a long term back to member, so you're sort of keeping an eye on these things as well, I'm sure. Is there anything in the uh, white paper that you're concerned about or that you're hopeful for? Um, I have to admit, I'm not particularly up on exactly what's happening to me this is where I rely on BACTA because they're going to just keep telling me what I need to know and what I need to do absolutely. as I go along absolutely I no, my I, head down just trying to get the business running for the summer and I totally I'll, I'll worry agree about with you <laughs> I have not read the uh the white paper uh cover to cover myself uh but I know that John White has and uh and we trust him to 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 work it out for us um but Speaking of Bacta, moving on, because I did throw you that question in as a bit of a curveball. Speaking of Bacta, um, what do you make of the restructure? Do you think this makes more sense uh, for you as a member to split it between, say, gaming and amusements? Well, the way I look at it is Bacta has been the way Bacta has been for a very long time. And, and nothing survives if it doesn't evolve. Yeah. Um, and so having a rethink and having a restructure... I have to respect that as a decision. I don't know whether it's going to work out better or not, but I, I respect them for giving it a go. And mm. after the support that we received through COVID, um, I'm I'm a pro backer person at the moment. You know, I really they really helped me personally through it. And James being the president at the time, that was really helpful to me because I knew that he knew everything mm. there is to know about my business. So that those interests were being looked after. And I I felt really supported. Yeah. Um, and I don't think we would have got open if in the time that we did without them keep plugging away and keep, you know, phoning the government up and saying we need to get them open. And we've all benefited from those extra few months that we, we got. Um, yeah. And if we are going to get through tough times going forward, that a bit of extra money we've been taking is going to come in very handy. Yeah. Um, and as far as streamlining it, that's a, that can only be a good thing. I'm sure there'll be tweaks and things that don't quite work as we go forward. But um, it seems to me that there's going to be some new younger people getting involved, which can only be a good thing, at the same time as keeping the more experienced ones on hand as well. So between the two of them, I feel like I'm in safe hands. That sounds exactly how Hopefully. I feel, and I think it's uh, I think it's it, it's good. Uh, it's great that you've um, uh, you know pointed out that hard work that Bacta did to do uh, during the pandemic. I was um, working quite closely with John at the time, and I know how hard Bacta worked and um, how much it meant to get open as soon as possible. So as far as the future is concerned, have you got any plans for the business? Anything, any investments, any uh, any new ideas that you plan to implement at all? I think the big challenge is about the, the lack of cash in society. I think that's that's our next big challenge. Um, and I I don't know where it's going to go because I'm, I'm I mean, it is we're not getting a real lot of help as to how to accommodate that cashless society yeah. um and yet nobody's got any money in their pocket so it, it's a real challenge for us and that's where we're going to be relying on back to, to be talking to government and just kind of making them aware because it never surprises me how much they don't understand our business yeah um yeah. and so just talking to them over and over again and just getting them to understand and i think you know the seaside business is a you know a really important part of our society especially if people are going to be really struggling for the next however long 
Um, it might be the only chance that families have got to get their kids out of the house, take them to the seaside for a few hours. You know, if you're playing the 2P pushers, you can spend hours for very little money. So I think it's a really important thing. So just trying to navigate how we're going to get through the cashless society problem. Yeah. I think that's our, our next big challenge. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Shaney. It's been brilliant speaking to you. Thank you very much for asking me. <laughs> it's <a> pleasure. <laughs>